right. All right, it's Ethan Mussolini, the merchant of success. And today is part two. Yesterday we went through part one. I will call them the 10 C's of a significant life or a successful life. And today we are going to, to look at nine other tips and so, not tips, really lessons, reflections that I've had by the age of 45. It's my birthday week. <laughs> Okay, so let's get going. Uh, let me first check this chart just in case. Okay, slides, great. So one of my biggest tips for you, coaching and mentoring is an investment. What do I mean? The, see, there are people who think or oh, when they, you know, they engage with a coach, usually a mentor you find, there are also mentors who charge, there are mentors who don't. But here, when I say investment, I mean time, money, uh, money, energies, especially money is where the issues come in. I've had a coach for close to eight years now. We meet every Monday from 1 to 2 p.m., and of course, I spend money. As you can imagine, you can imagine how much I've spent over the last eight years nonstop. And we only miss two weekends. We only miss two Mondays in a year. So 50 sessions uh, in a year. Over four, over eight years, that's 400 sessions. It's one of, so meaning at least over 400 hours. And I also do sometimes other short courses in between. And I'll tell you, it's one of the best investments I've ever had in my life. It's one of the things that, that I'm most grateful for. So I cannot emphasize this enough for you to, to find a coach in your life, a mentor in your life. Because you see, the challenge with only relying on, on uh, people who are very close to you is sometimes they are not as honest with you. They, they fear to, to make you feel hurt. They will not tell you the truth. But if you're paying someone, their job is to help you move forward. They will tell you. I, I recall there is a time, it was about lunchtime, I bumped into a branch manager, a manager for a bank, an international bank. And she had something in her eyes, uh, Kajonja, I don't know what it is called in English. Sometimes, uh, you know, I forget what the, the word is, but the, some people call it half cake or something like that in their eyes. It was lunchtime. And in my head, I was like, you know what? Surely someone at the workplace saw that she had something in her eye, but could not face her up and say, hey, madam, you have something in your eye, you need to clean it up. So the, the point I'm putting across here is you need someone who's going to be honest with you, where their ultimate job is to help you move you forward, not to make you feel good, okay, but to make you move forward. So my challenge to you is even as you, depending on when you're listening to this, because some of you could be listening to this as a recording, it should be one of your core goals. If you don't have a coach in your life, get one, okay? If you feel that I resonate with you, well, you know, it's part of what I do in life, career, life and career development, whether it's communications. If, if I'm not the kind that you find you resonate with, find someone that you resonate with and invest. You will be thankful for this message, uh, for this advice that I passed on to you, that coaching is a universal language of learning, and you don't have to make mistakes someone else did, because uh, part of what a coach will do is that they will share with you the mistakes. I remember yesterday I was sharing about some of my mistakes, and I will share with you some of, of those uh, here. So the key thing is, now when I say mistakes, especially for mentors, mentors are those who will show you the, the way of life. A coach sure typically has, you know, you have a certain goal, so I want to achieve this, and they help you to move forward to that, and they help you to get there faster. A mentor sh uh, typically shows you their way of being, their way of life, um, and it's okay to have different coaches and mentors. I have a couple of, of those, just that I've had one very steady for the last eight years, so you could have um, a relationships mentor. You can have a business uh, coach. Uh, you can have a spiritual mentor, you can have a health coach. So you can have different uh, coaches and mentors around you. I remember someone told me that uh, Oprah Winfrey has six mentors and, and coaches. So that should give you an idea that, uh, so it's not the only reason, but it's one of the reasons why she's a billionaire, okay? 
Professor Banyo said continuous learning is the basis of avoiding ignorance. So there you go. The tip number 12 is asking higher instead of bargaining with yourself first. Okay. This is what I mean. I this is where I got to this lesson. In my work of coaching, I've had two experiences. And those experiences have been where I thinking that, ah, ah, these ones, they may not be able to pay a lot of money. So let's quote this, otherwise we won't get the job. And sometimes they you quote even what you think is law and someone still comes back, they still want to negotiate lower. Then I've had a few moments where I quote what I think or imagine that it is so big and you know we just receive an LPO like that. And someone is not negotiating and to a point where you're like, oh, maybe if we had quoted even higher, <laughs> maybe they would have been, I would have been paid more or something like that. And so that taught me and that lesson has been sinking deeper and deeper like the last for, you know, I would say three to four, I would say three to five years or so. I've been learning that over and over again. And, and that really woke me up to the idea that sometimes we bargain with ourselves before the other party bargains. And I, one of the things I noticed that one of our staff also put something in the proposal and the proposal was, oh, we are willing to negotiate on this quote. At first, I thought, oh, that's a brilliant idea. It gives us room to, it gives us room to be able to, uh, in case someone thinks it, we are too high, it gives us a chance to negotiate again. It, meant, it seemed to make a lot of sense then. Uh, we started using that line about, what, about six years ago or so, or five or four, possibly five or four years ago. Then when I started realizing this idea of asking higher, I started telling my, my colleagues at uh, Success saying, no, we need to start, we need to remove that line. But if someone doesn't want to negotiate, because we've had a couple of those cases, and besides, if someone wants to negotiate, they're going to negotiate anyway. <laughs> Out of curiosity, let me see, I type in the chat box one, if you've had those experiences where you thought you mentioned a price or you made a request, it may not be a price, it could be a request for uh, either to go out or a request for flowers or a request for more food or more, more this or more that or more money. And you were on your toes thinking, ah, they might say, no, my goodness, I hope I've not asked too much. And then someone says, ah, okay, that's fine. And then in your head, you're like, oh, so I could even have asked more. Please type one if that has ever happened to you in your life. Type one in the chat box if it has ever happened to you. You thought you were asking for too much. And then someone says, yeah, that's okay, no problem. And then in another way, you're like, ah, I wish I had asked for more. Okay, I'm seeing a couple of ones coming through in the chat box. So what that tells us, thank you. I'm seeing a couple of ones. What that tells us is moving forward. Do not hold back. Ask, you have a right to ask. As a daughter and son of God, you have the right to ask big. Because when, you know, besides, what if it works? And if it doesn't, you didn't have it anyway in the first place. <laughs> You didn't have it in the first place. So uh, that's, and this principle when I'm teaching sales also is uh, when someone says no, you didn't have, you didn't have a yes in the first place anyway, uh, but you have a right to ask. Just know you have the right and the responsibility to ask. It's let, let the other party be the one to negotiate you downwards, not you negotiating yourself downwards before you even start. So ask higher always, okay? Cool. Let me, let me see. Okay, these were extra ones. Okay, cool. Yeah, so for me, that's been a core lesson in the last uh, couple of years, five years or so. Okay, let's go. The other one is so quality seeds. I'm sure this one will make lots of sense to you. But, you know, we, we've always heard that you reap what you sow. Now, what if, because that, that's been almost like a cliche, uh, besides being a biblical line, biblical wisdom. But here's the key thing. You need to ask yourself, is what I'm sowing quality? Because, you know, it's, oh, you reap what you sow. But then what if we developed the awareness that 
every thought, every activity, every engagement, every interaction is that I'm sowing a seed. I will tell you, I learned this a couple of years ago in that even when, even when um, I was still single, I learned this in that whenever I would interact with a lady and she says no, I always uh, wanted to leave it on a good note. Say bye, have a nice day, or have a blessed day, no worries. And because in my spirit, I felt, look, so what? She has said no. First of all, she has the right to say no. And two, it's not, it's not in my wherewithal well to live on a bad note, on a sour note. Besides, what if, and guess what? Some of these people you find, and then I would find them in a training hall. <laughs> So the, the point I'm making is to have that awareness to say, okay, what am I sowing today? Am I sowing a smile? I saw someone on, um, you know, I, I posted something on, um, when I posted my message on Facebook about my birthday on Monday, I saw a message that, you know, many people, you know, uh, you know, a couple of messages came through, which I appreciate some of you did. But one of those that really, really touched my, my soul and spirit is there's a lady who posted something there. I said, oh, Ethan, I'll never forget you, we were at prime time. Prime time is at Makero University every Saturday. You know, they do, uh, you know, gospel music, entertainment, and then some preaching at the end at the university swimming pool. So this lady posted something saying, oh, Ethan, I'll never forget you give me 10,000 shillings and said, oh, she was selling juice. And so I just passed on that 10,000, said, said, okay, you gave me 10,000 to give juice to whoever wanted. And said, I'll never forget uh, your generosity. But even though 10,000 was little money to you for me, it meant a world to me. Now, I swear to you, I have, I, I wasn't remembering anything like that, me doing that. But 10 years later, this lady is remembering that. And it made a difference in her life. And now she's celebrating me in front of everyone. I'm sure it taught her something. Uh, it, it blessed me during my birthday week that I did something beautiful for some. I wasn't remembering that at all, of course. So the point I'm making is sow quality seeds. But I should, if you're writing somewhere, sow quality seeds continuously. Because my coach asked me a powerful question. Uh, on Monday, he said, Ethan, is the world better off because you were born? I said, yes, absolutely. I know that because I've impacted millions of lives. And that, that was a powerful question. No one has ever asked me such a question. And I believe for us to, to, to make this world a better place, we have to keep sowing quality seeds. And the quality seed could be a seed of encouragement, it could be a seed of excellence, it could be a seed of helping someone. Some of you here have helped me, some of you have helped you. But you see, by helping each other, then that's how we grow. That's how we move the world forward, okay? The, uh, my coach talk, likes talking about the, being a spiritual farmer. You need to become a spiritual farmer. A spiritual farmer sows good seeds. Make sure that there are things or beautiful things they are sowing out there in the universe. So what are those things? Because if each day you sow a quality seed, then in a week you have seven. In a year, if, if in a year you sow 365 seeds, trust me, over time, all that comes back to you. But, so that's something I want you to remember that. But this is what I also noticed. I was reading somewhere last night and they were talking about that when you bless 11 people, then your blessings are multiplied by 11 times. <laughs> of course, I'm not saying that you do this just so you get back. Like when I gave that 10,000 uh, shillings to that lady, I don't even know how she looks like. I don't have no clue. And 10 years ago, so not necessarily I did just so I might get something back. No, you just do that out of what you feel in your spirit because, and I'm sure God is always telling us to do something or helps that person or, you know, call someone or bless that someone, just like someone uh, sent me 50,000. <laughs> as a birthday gift on mobile money, where I had said that I wouldn't mention them all, but they, they did. 
that's not something that I expected out of the blue. It was a huge blessing to put a huge smile on my face. So just keep sowing quality seeds. But guess what? You get that quote. You, you, get, you reap big time over time. And of course, you're not doing it just because you might get. Do it because you've been blessed anyway. So, for example, when I say blessed, for example, I've been blessed with lots of wisdom and knowledge over the years because this is my passion. I love this. So rather than me waiting for birthday gifts, I thought, okay, let me give out these gifts to the world. <laughs> okay, because I've been blessed immensely with some of the best teachers in the world. Um, the, I mean, like the coach I told you for eight years, someone else pays a fortune over the years. If I told you the money is you didn't believe. I just know someone pays a fortune, I just pays a percentage, still a lot of money by Ugandan standards, but someone pays, this is someone who pays, who charges a lot of money, a lot of money, just not thousands of dollars per hour, just to give you a clue, thousands of dollars per hour, okay? So I pay a portion of that, thousands, okay? Um, okay, next lesson, learning and growing is priceless. So. This is key, that some days win, sometimes you learn, but the key thing is make every experience a learning moment. Okay. And I like saying that I either win or learn something. That's the mentality you should have. That's, that's, that's the mentality I would want you to have always, no matter what. Then number two, and I know I've say, shared it, it before, I will share it again because it's cool. Warren Buffett's uh, partner, I need to, I, yeah, it's called Charlie Munger. He said that make sure you sleep with less ignorance today than you, you were yesterday. So my question today is, my question for you is, are you better off today mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, physically, or something? Or have you learned something to better yourself? So learn something every single day. You know, spend at least minimum 30 minutes learning something okay it could be an audio you're learning you're, you're listening to it could be a video you're watching it could be a book you're reading and i can tell you can always find time so i say, oh i don't have time i used to use that as an excuse also at one time because when in my early 20s i was reading literally a book per week and uh, now it's quite a challenge, but you know what? I discovered other tricks to learn. You know, there the are audios and I can listen to an audio at two times the speed. So, which means I can consume a lot of content in a short amount of time, sometimes even at a faster rate than that. There are ways to do that. So learn, make it, make it, it's, it's, it's less Brown's but I would say that I learned my, my son, because when you open your, your mouth, you tell the world who you are. So that stuck with me. I, I listened to that shortly after I finished uh, university. I believe I listened to that audio in the year 2000. And that, that stuck with me to say, okay, you know what? When you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. So out of curiosity, let me please type in the chat box number two. If you've ever chatted with someone and in less than and in less than say five minutes, less than five minutes, you could tell that oh, this person is exposed or this person is knowledgeable. Type number two if that has ever happened to you. If chatted with someone less than two minutes, you're like, wow, this fellow, this lady, or this gentleman is very knowledgeable. You know, they haven't told you, okay? I'm seeing lots of tools. So that's the key. And if you're to move forward, I want you to put your best foot forward. One of the best things you can do is that, you know, you're always marketing yourself. I talk about personal branding and marketing. So please do not undersell yourself. So this time you're, you're spending on just uh, YouTube or, or WhatsApp, what are you consuming? Watch what you're consuming because it's going to show up anyway. What are you sowing in your head? <laughs> okay, tip number 15. I call it application beyond reflection, okay? That never let what you don't know stop you from doing what you know. Because sometimes we, what I mean by that application beyond reflection, and this is something that my, my, my coach has been emphasizing to me in that sometimes I overanalyze meaning I over-reflect. And I'm here to tell you that the world rewards application more than a reflection. 
So learn as much as you can. I talked about learning, but then you must apply. It's not enough to learn. You must apply. We usually say, okay, that knowledge is power. No, it's applied knowledge, which is powerful. Because if you have a bunch of ideas and thoughts, and if you have the best models and methodologies and frameworks, but they are just in your head and they are not out there in the world, they're not doing a lot of good for the world. So apply, think application. There, 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 there is, they, someone sometime back wrote that uh, something like action beats meditation all the time. I would say you have to, you need meditation also, okay? So you need to meditate, you need to reflect. There is nothing wrong with that. I'm saying there has to be a balance. Yeah. What do I mean by balance? So there are those who believe that you should spend like 80% in action and 20% in uh, reflection. There are those who think you should spend 80% in reflection and 20%. So I would say find what works for you. But I would say from my personal experience so far, think 50-50 at least. Okay. So you should, in terms of application, you shouldn't go below up, you shouldn't go below 50%. And most times I found myself going below that. And it's very, it can be very costly. The beauty is when you act. Through application, you learn a lot than just hey, waiting and hesitating and thinking and writing down and doing lots of... No, when you apply things, then you get insights. Say, wow, okay, now I couldn't have done this. Let me, let me see if... Type the letter Y or if you've noticed that most of your insights have come through application. Where you're like, wow, I wouldn't have figured this out if I had not done this. Whether it was a mistake or a success, you're like, wow, thank God. Okay, type Y. You're like, if I had not taken action, if I had not made that phone call, if I had not met this person, if I had not built this thing, if I had not done it, I wouldn't have discovered this. Like you are thinking there is no way in a million years I would have realized this. So that's okay. I'm seeing lots of yeses, whys. So that's the key, my friend. We have to think application. And so my, my commitment moving forward is to do more application. There is also time for reflection. Like the last six plus months, I've done a lot of reflection on purpose. So you'll be seeing lots of action moving forward. That's why you've not been seeing me a lot online and all that stuff. It's because I've been doing that. But now I feel I've garnered enough fuel and now moving, you're going to see lots of action moving forward. So, but the key thing is through application, we get deeper reflections. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Let me type that. That is uh, divine guidance for sure because that's not something I had prepared, I swear. Let me write it here. Through, through application, we get, we receive, oh, what's that? We receive deeper reflection, okay? But I like that. Thank you, God. All right. Next, number 16. Never seek for permission to perform. <laughs> um, yes, 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 yes. And the proof of desire is passive, but this is what I mean, my friend. So, Life rewards those who step forward and take that action. But not action, I'm talking about a need in society. A chair falls, step up, lift it up. You're seeing some, some um, I, I recall last time, it was last month. Was it last month? Yes, last month. I was walking and there was a concrete um, that was on the road and had a sharp, a sharp nail or something like that. And I had to lift it and get it off the road. So I learned when I was young, well, I believe I was about the age of nine or 10 or thereabouts. I, I don't remember who taught me that my uncle or someone ever had that. When you find a stick on the way, remove it so that it does not trip the person who comes after you. 
And I recall, if I'm not mistaken, that person saying, okay, it shouldn't trip the other person, but it might also trip you. So that really stuck with me since childhood. But then later, when I was about the age of 22, I was doing an internship in the US, someone said this, never seek for permission to perform. And what they were emphasizing is, when you see an opportunity, step up. When you see a need, step up and be of service. Yeah, actually, that's the key thing. Be, be ready to be of service. Never seek for permission to serve, okay? So because that's what we are called to be, servants, okay? Servants, not to be served, but to be servants. And a servant is someone who sees a need and they step up. And in life, because this, these are the first two editions are really about life in general, and then tomorrow I'll be talking about career. But life in general is really about you thinking service, service. And the reflection I have right now is we are being served by lots of blessings. The sun serves us. The oxygen we breathe is service from above. The people around us are service from above. The parents that God gave us, those that's service, that's divine service. So the, the best, so to mimic what God is doing is by being of service. We have to become an extension of God's co-creative powers that we were that were bestowed upon us. We have to perform, we have to serve. So actually so moving forward in few, in fact we should change that never seek for permission to serve, not to perform but to serve. Okay, never seek for permission to serve. I like the word service better because it's more, more tangible. Um, this, I, I got it verbatim from when I first heard it about 20 years ago, and it's still powerful. And I'm, I'm editing it now to never seek for permission to serve, not service, to serve. Because I want us to think as servants, to, to always step out there and say, how can I be of service today? Um, my coach and mentor always says, okay, every day ask yourself, God, how can I serve you, God, today? Okay. And he was saying that when you serve God, then God serves you. <laughs> they like that. And I usually forget to ask myself that question. But now that I'm saying it, it reminds me to keep reminding myself every day, God, how can I be of service today? How can I serve you today? How can I be of service in your kingdom today? Because we are operating in God's kingdom. This is God's kingdom. This is God's planet. So God, how can I be of service today? How can I be of service? How can I be of service today? So I almost hesitated. This thought I believe was really from God to, to do these sessions. And I almost, God said, no, you have to do it. <laughs> so uh, next. So this was number 16. Number 17 is daily routines determine your destiny, okay? By the way, before I continue on this point, does this, is this making sense to you so far? Type number one if this is making sense to you so far because I know we are almost done, so I want to make sure that we are, we are on board. Type one if this is making sense so far or is clear. Is it clear? Does it make sense? Don't have to agree with it. But I'm saying, does it make sense or is it clear? If you don't agree, it's okay. I'll create some time at the end to for you to ask some questions. And, and please remember to invite your friends. Uh, they will be operating from the same link. Okay, seeing lots of ones and the word clear. Fantastic. Next, the daily, routine, daily routines determine your destiny, okay? Just remember that. It's what you do on a daily basis. That only where you... Only where your daily routines are concentrated is where you is where you achieve or is what you achieve. That we are what we uh, do repeatedly. Uh, excellence is not an act but a habit. I believe that was from Aristotle or someone. So that's not directly from me. I need to give credit where credit is due. That excellence is not um, an act but a habit. It's one of the philosophers. Anyone who remembers the philosopher who said that it was either Aristotle or Plato. Uh, someone can check online so that we do the proper attribution. I forgot to put that attribution there. That's not from Ethan. So I was just emphasizing that. You can type there. Someone can type in online. Excellence is not an act, but a habit. Okay. So th th this is the key. This is the key thing I want to share with you. In that. Ask yourself, so when, for my high-end clients, I usually say, okay, this is the thing that you want to achieve. What is that thing that you need to do on a daily basis that would make the achievement of your goal automatic? For example, if you walk every day, I can guarantee you, you'll become fitter, period. 
Okay, if you do it every day, if you swim every day, can guarantee you over time you overcome your fear of swimming, or you will do the um you will you, you if you're doing of course the proper practice and all that so that's the other thing that um, uh, you have so ask yourself so moving forward so the tip here for you is what is that thing you need to do on a daily basis that will move you forward if you're in sales you must call people every day okay if you want to become a writer if there is a book that you want to write if you wrote a page and if you just wrote 100 words every single day oh 100 words, that's over 30,000 words, over 30,000 words. Now, meaning if you, and that's more than enough of a book, I've given you a tip right there, just type 100 words. If each one of us can type 100 words in a day, please type 100. If you believe you can type 100 words, 100 words, type 100, <laughs> 100 words. Let me see, no one can type 100 words in a day or daily. 100. Okay, great. It definitely has uh, type in Naomi, types 100. Who else? You can do that. Okay. Now, that's the tip. So for some of us who have been wondering, oh, I want to write a book. I want to write this. I've given you a tip right there. Just 100 words or a page. That's the tip. Daily or routine. So ask yourself, what's that thing that I need to do on a daily basis that will help me move forward? Okay. All right, Nicholas, thank you so much. Uh, let me copy that. Thanks a lot, Nicholas. Let me copy that. Oh, okay. I'm seeing, um, okay, I'm seeing two quotations, but they are related. So I suspect, let me let me type them here. Uh, yeah, thank you. By the way, when I'm teaching, I'm always open to learn new things. So I'm seeing Nicholas has raised this. Let me first type that. Then Angela also gave me another version. Let me show you what she typed here. Kelly Hunter. Oh, come on. What is it? No. Okay. So for some reason, I'm struggling to. Okay, got it. So Angela Nalunga. Just give me this. Okay. So, excellence is not an act, but a habit. Okay. So, therefore, it was actually direct from that then. So, thanks a lot for that. So, thank you, Angela and Nicholas. Much appreciated. Okay. So Aristotle, is, for Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. So I believe then Aristotle must have been the, uh, the source because most likely, is, uh, most, li most likely Aristotle was older. At least that's what I read, uh, if I'm not mistaken. All right, thank you. So Calvin must have been quoting Aristotle also. Now, next. Number 18, association influences projection. Okay. Association influences projection. Meaning, you see, when you are around people, okay, the Russian poet, they tell me your friends, I tell you what you are. And what they really meant here is, or the core lesson here is, what we know is that we, are, we, emit, we emit a spirit, we emit energy. And that energy impacts you. So that energy will either facilitate you moving faster or that energy will slow you down. And that's what you project in the world. If you, there's been research around, um, is it nature or nurture? Okay. And that's been a big debate. Okay. Goretti says birds of the same feathers flock together. There you go. Thank you, Goretti. So meaning, most likely you are as your friends are. The translation is, if you like your lifestyle, keep the same friends. If you don't like the lifestyle or the results you have, please get new friends. The good news is you're getting this before, of course, for us who are attending live, it's just before the beginning of the year, new year. So look for new friends who will push you to a higher level. 
okay? Because I'll tell you, if you have a friend who is, if you have many friends who are running fast, they'll tell you, yes, you can do it, you can do it. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. If you have friends who are negative and they're slow and that's the majority, you coming in there and you attempt to move them, they'll pull you down. They say, no, what are you, what are you showing here, okay? How many of you have experienced both worlds where you, you go, in a group of people of achievers and you automatically raise your game. And then you move into a group of naysayers, people who are negative, they are slow, they are what? And then before you know it, you notice that your performance is going lower. If you've experienced that, please type one. <laughs> you're going to say it's me. Actually type the word me. If that, that says, if that speaks it, you know, you're going to make these high achievers and boom, Automatically, you're like, hey, I have to raise my game. I have to move. I, I, it's, I have to go. And then you're going to this other group of naysayers. And before you know, you even have, develop a headache. You develop little. It's like people start looking at you with negativity. Um, you know, you go, you go in an organization which has a high performance culture, you automatically raise your game. I remember when I was a training consultant to British Council, my uh, supervisor, Wanjiku, she was Kenyan, a wonderful lady. And I was walking, but it looks like I wasn't walking fast. Then she, I remember her saying, okay, I know if in, in a few months you'll be walking much faster than that. <laughs> and trust me, I did, because the British Council culture was that of moving fast, of you know accelerating your pace. So that's it. So my projection had to match what was being projected down to me. So what's projected down to you, project it down to the world, okay? So pay attention to that, my friend. Sometimes, um, sometimes it means, even if it means paying to be in a certain group, you pay to be in part of a mastermind that will push you. Goretti says, Mbolia goitana ye kubuli le mpisazo, okay? Mbolia goitana ye kubuli le mpisazo. I suppose the direct meaning is, show me the one, you know, your friend or, or the person you match with or you work with, the direct translation is you work with, then I'll tell you what your character is. Goretti, have I translated it properly? Because I know your Uganda is much better than mine. Yes, you have. Okay, thank you very much. So, meaning, so here is another question for you. The, your closest friends, would you feel proud if they took a picture of you and they published it all over the internet? Would you feel proud? If the answer is yes, fantastic. Okay. If not, uh-uh. Revise, revise, revise your. Next. Consult legends, not convenience. By the way, I, I have no clue where Florence got that picture. I like that image. Consult legends, not convenience. That seek knowledge to distinguish you. But this is what I wanted to mean. I noticed that sometimes one of the biggest mistakes we make is we consult people who are just near us just because they are near to us. They are, it's convenient to ask them. It's convenient to ask your uncle, your auntie, your spouse, your friend, because they are just near you. Not because they know. Not because they know. So I've seen people consult the, they are uncles who have never done business because that is your uncle. You're consulting someone who is, you know, who's never written a book and you say, okay, how should I write this book? Just because they're your friend. I recall when I wrote my first book, I engaged a friend of mine to do the editing just because she was a friend. I did not, and when the book came out, I felt embarrassed. I had to pull it off the market and hire a professional editor. That's what I mean by consulting legends. Because usually convenience is not the standard of excellence. Sometimes it might mean, it might be painful, it might mean paying extra money, it might mean walking a distance, it might mean driving 100 kilometers to go meet someone, it might mean spending the whole night to listen to someone talk, it might mean, you know, going through the hoops to be part of a certain club, consult that person to get that nugget, that wisdom. 
That's what I mean by consulting, right? It's not convenience. And most times I've been a victim of this. And the few times we have chosen to consult legends, regardless of what it took to pay, whether it meant time or money, energy, or the combination of all those, it was worth it. So moving forward, if you want to move faster, consult legends, meaning consult those who have already been there, not those who are already with you, okay? Now, just again, to summarize today's part two, remember coaching and stroke mentoring is an investment, not a cost. Asking high instead of bargaining with yourself, let the other party be the one to bargain. So quality seeds continuously. Then learning and growing is priceless. Application beyond reflection. Never seek for permission to perform or to serve. I, I you know, I changed that to permission to serve. Yeah, let me change that. Never seek for permission to serve. Daily routines determine your destiny. Association influences projection. Consult legends, not convenience, okay? And if you do this, it will push you to a higher level, okay? So uh, before we wrap this up, what did you find most useful in this presentation? And how are you going to implement the lessons moving forward in your life, career, and business? And of course, the next segment is going to be about career. Please type in the chat box and tell me what you found most useful and how you're going to implement this in your life, career, or business. Please go ahead and type in the chat box. And of course, um, I did lessons last year, yeah, around uh, August, September. They were meant to be for like, I was targeting for $1,000 a package. God told me to give everything away for free. <laughs> so you can go to succeedingdaily.com. I downloaded everything. You can subscribe my YouTube channel and all that. These are my phone numbers. And Florence, please type in the chat box your personal lines. Florence is my assistant in case you want to reach out. That's um, in case you want human resource consulting, training, organizational development, go to success-africa.com or email info at success-africa.com. All right. So let me see the lessons or the insights. They are coming in fast here. Ah, okay. I went down. I went up. Great. If you found this valuable, also it would be good to see the type the word value. Or if uh, let me see, yeah, I want to see the lessons. Avoid consulting for convenience, Rotaria <laughs> Niomi. Thank you for catching that. Uh, Angela Nalunga, never never to seek permission to perform or to serve. Great, so quality seeds consistently. Uh, Goretti says that I shall do always. Great. Consulting legends, not convenience. Thank you, Helen. Uh, asking Ethan to share the birthday cake. <laughs> Naomi, I wish you were here. Uh, I believe there is still a small piece. The my 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 four year old girl, and it was a very yummy cake. And she says, "Yummy, it is so yummy, yummy." <laughs> but the cake I'm sharing is the is the knowledge cake. Helen says application beyond reflection. Desire says value, Angela value, great. That's Florence's number, my assistant in case Andrew has typed it in. Association influences projection. So I always love keeping time and please you can go to Facebook when I post about these classes, you know, tell people, yeah, this is the place to go, you know, you know, encourage people to be to come for these other segments. And for you, if you're watching this as a recording somewhere, please share it with as many people as possible. It's always a pleasure engaging with you. I'm being of service. I thank God for this gift. And um, and um, I'm also thankful for gifting me with your presence, whether you're here live or watching the recording. I thank you so much. And may the good Lord bless you, whatever that means to you. Okay. Uh, let me see. So.